Therapy roulette, consent event. Trauma disguised as comedy. Therapy roulette, consent event. If you don't have problems, then you're likely repressing shit and you should find a therapist who's not me. Welcome back to Therapy Roulette. I'm here with Skyle, uh, Skyler, <laughs> Skyle, Skyler Giordano. He is a podcaster, creator, producer of Omega Star 7. It's a space opera drama. Check it out. And he's also a musician. Skyler, welcome to the podcast. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Um, we are, we're getting over the fact that I forgot to record the first 20 minutes and now we're going to jump That's, back in. <laughs> it's okay. We can do this one better. I know it. Yeah. Speaking of like why your brain needs sleep and your body needs rest. This is why. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. Please, please take time for yourself because you need it. I'm so all over the place. Like I, I swear I'm almost a year into therapy roulette. I'm like, oh, I have a system. I know everything. Clearly you can no, never no, stop no. learning. <laughs> There's always something that comes up and you're like, oh, how do I fix this? Or how do I do this? And you have, I've learned more in podcasting that I, ha I have, like a lot of my friends went to school for this and I'm like, why don't you just start a podcast and learn everything that way? Because mm -hmm. yeah, every day is a crash course in something. I mean, I, I it's spent a great learning curve. I, uh, when I do the podcast and Mega Star seven, I, uh, I do. So you can see the synthesizers behind me and, mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of the music before the show because um, I want to like feel. I, I like I like to build this the the narrative around like the feel of the music and it's kind of like a rock opera kind of thing. And uh, I actually and sometimes I'll play to what's like I'll listen back and I'll play with it. And uh, today I just had to sit there and because I had to go out and get a new interface because the one I have now doesn't work with PC and it works on my Mac, mm -hmm. so. I had to like play with oh, both PC track. and Mac. Yeah. My, well, I use my, to record, I record in the basement because it's what it's cement and there's <laughs> soundproofing everywhere. So it sounds way better. I mean, these dynamic mics that I use are a lot that you can, it cuts out most room noise, but uh, I like even, it's even quieter down there. And mm -hmm. uh, down there, I use my wife's Mac for her. I just, I just get the, the uh, audio and I send it over to my PC to work on. Because I spent a lot of money on this PC and I have to use it more. <laughs> I feel like I wasted money. I'm kind of jealous you have a basement. They don't have basements in California. Yeah, when I was in San Francisco, um, I noticed that. It's, uh, I mean, because of the, you know, flooding and storms and stuff. I mean, I hate my basement though because uh, it floods all the time. And uh, yeah. <laughs> it's about, it's gross. And I, I, have the cat, I have cats and that's where their litter boxes are. And just the smell uh, and it's not furnished <laughs> either. It's like, you know, it's not finished whatsoever. It's all slate walls. So if it's storming really bad out there, the, like it'll be like waterfalls coming out of the wall when you're down there. You can hear it. And it's, it's basements have their own, <laughs> their own issues, unfortunately. Does this motivate you to record <laughs> all these uh, environment factors? Yes. Um, it makes me want to get out of it as quickly as possible. So yeah, that's something. I'm, I'm down there and I'm like, let's just, let's get it over with and we can go upstairs and drink. So, yeah. So, um, <laughs> we were talking about your ADHD yes. and your, uh, motivation for starting Omega star seven. Do you want to tell us how those two connect your ADHD and the podcast? Yes. So I live my life like a Venn diagram <laughs> and, um, I find everything I like to do or and or am good at because not all, those things don't always overlap. And uh, I, when I first did Omega Star Seven, I it, last year I wanted to do like an audio drama that was also an actual play, you know, tabletop game. And uh, I realized that I didn't. I like the role playing factors of tabletop games because you know you're like you're improving, and uh, I didn't like the actual like running the game while also being recorded. Because if you listen back to these old episodes, they're just me just like what I'm doing right now. I'm just can't get what I want to say out. And um, <laughs> um, like so, the early episodes. Yeah. Like the first eight, I mean, it gets a lot better because we just kind of like said, you know, what? we got four hours. Let's just take it slow. And yeah. uh, we did. Uh, there's <laughs> a whole thing I can do on the behind the scenes of uh, actual play uh, games. But um I realized that I like telling a story and I always have been. And so going back to where, like how the two affect each other is living with ADHD. As I said, I said before we didn't, we realized we weren't recording. It, it's, 
not medically accurate, but I think apt to say that, at least in my experience, ADHD is like the perception of schizophrenia. You hear voices, but instead of it being random voices, it's your voices just talking to yourself and you can't get it to shut up. Yeah. And uh, I like that constant... description. I've never heard yeah, it I, I think it makes sense. I mean, like, I think like ADHD is like a blanket. It has a little bit of everything. Like um, uh, a lot of my friends are on the spectrum and uh, I, I can see a lot of similarities between like, you know, they, I don't want to say issues because I think everything is also, I think a lot of things are also positive, but I think a lot of the, what they deal mm-hmm. with, I also deal with, or like schizophrenia, I deal with like these loud voices. You can't focus on anything, but the voices. And I, I get that. And I know it's not the same, obviously, but you know, I feel like ADHD has a little bit of everything, which is why it's like one of the most misdiagnosed of all the, uh, I think it's one of the most misdiagnosed because I, I, you know, growing up, every kid had ADHD or ADD or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> and they just threw pills at kids, you know, like when we were kids, they would just throw pills, right. be like, how about Zoloft? How about Adderall? How about Concerta and all this stuff? And they just, it really messed up an entire generation of kids. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't want to get too depressing here, but anyway, so <laughs> I have a lot of passions and uh, a lot of the passions are like music and telling stories and hanging out with my friends and just kind of like making it like improving and playing, playing games and watching movies. Mm -hmm. So I was like, where do all of these things meet? And at Mm -hmm. first I thought, well, I'll do an actual play podcast. And then I realized that I didn't, I didn't like the editing down three hours of audio to an hour. So when you started, it was scripted. It was not scripted. It was, uh, it was just like it is now, except there's no gameplay elements. Like there's no, Mm -hmm roll for this roll for that no it's just it's just full story now and now it's like i think it it moves a lot easier recordings a lot easier because we just kind of sit because it's improv we don't script it we script a few little things but uh now it's like we sit down in the room and i we uh you know i'll say okay this scene right here this is what's going to happen i'll have like scene notes and then we'll just say let's let's just improv it and I actually got that from uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the the Thor Ragnarok that movie from the you know Marvel. No, uh, it's, I'm I'm it's, actually really bad at Marvel, so that's okay. <laughs> and because it's not it's not really about it's I'm probably the, the only person listening who doesn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I listen like I I I'm I'm in and out of love of Marvel all the time. I think like <laughs> some of it's really good, some of it's really like eh, like it's all it's all it's all watchable, but it's not all great. But Thor yeah. Ragnarok in <laughs> particular, um, Taika Waititi is the director of that movie. And Taika Waititi did uh, What We Do in the Shadows and Jojo Rabbit. Oh, and yeah. a, lo- a lot of these like dark comedy movies. Jojo and Rabbit he- was so good. I-, I loved that movie. I saw it in theater. I just, I was like, I want to see this movie. Me too. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, just, it's like, it's like Inglorious Bastards without the violence. I like that. Like, you know, it has the, it's, I don't know. But how do you find sympathy for Nazi children? Jojo Rabbit. <laughs> exactly. Well, you gotta realize, like those kids, how they didn't, they didn't know what was going on. <laughs> like, no. And being a parent myself, I, you know, I get, like, you know, if your parents are Nazis, and that's the that's the one person you look up to is your parents. So when you're like three or four years old, or five or six, you only mm-hmm. look up to one person. So if your parents are, you know, Nazi Bad sympathizers, people. you might be too. Like, mm-hmm. and uh, or you can be like the opposite. It's it's a crapshoot with kids, but uh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, um, either, you either like idolize that parent for a long time or, or you, you want to be the total you opposite. Them, you <laughs> them and you're like, wow. but I, that, that, if you if watch Jojo Rabbit, it can, it has some hard parts to watch, but I think it's a, it's a very, it's a very good movie. But Taika yeah. Waititi, when they did Thor Ragnarok, what they did was, what he did was um, he wrote the, the narrative and then a lot of the scenes were improvised. I, lo- I watched the behind the scenes and they improvised a lot of that movie to make mm-hmm. it seem like it was like more grounded and like relatable. And you can really feel it when you watch the movie that they're all just having a good time. And I just, in my podcast, I try to echo that. And that's kind of like, it goes back to like why I do it is because like at the end of the day, it's fun to do. And if, when I, when I record it or when I edit it, I'm laughing the whole times of the bits and the gags we're doing. And like, if it wasn't fun to do, I wouldn't do it. That's kind of my thing. So like, yeah, it can be hard to do, but not all, not all, not all hard things are bad. You know what I mean? 
there's some uh, rewards you're like digging yeah. out of all the hard work. Exactly. And it you feels were, accomplishing. You were telling me, and I don't want to make you retell the whole story, but um, you were telling me you started Omega Star 7 in 2020. Yes. And, and it was uh, cool to look back at like, oh, look at what I did in 2020. Yeah, like twenty, like you know, we don't, we don't have to get into COVID too much, but uh, like we did last time. <laughs> COVID's still out there. We're not going to get into it. <laughs> um, wear your mask if you need to, and get vaccinated if you can. But uh, um, yeah, looking back in twenty twenty, it's like I did everything I could not to think about twenty twenty. I was out of work for two months. I, you know, and they called me back. Honestly, I wish I worked harder during the times I was off work, I wish I'd have went way harder. Cause like right now on the podcast, on, on, on Twitch streaming podcast, cause the podcast I, that happened after I went back to work, I wish I had the concept for Omega star seven, but I, it couldn't have been done then because <laughs> of the fact that we have to do it in person. And we, we I didn't see anyone for like two months. So like, yeah. except for my family and we were uh, still figuring that out. So like, I'm glad it happened when it did, but, um, Cause we were going to, we, we tried to do it online and it did not, it did not fly. It was not working. So is that just because of the improv element? You think it the improv translate? element? Like, I think like, I, I hear a lot of, and this is a, this might be a personal thing, but you know, I, I might go out to, I might, I might go on record to say that <laughs> um, you can always, I think there's a higher quality to improv done in person versus over a zoom call. And that could be, Oh yeah. Could like, cause like when you listen to like these, like, tabletop like tabletop podcast what you hear is like this those like little bits of like cut out like oh this person so like this i said something to you and then there's like a space and that throws off the comedic timing of there's like, a lag yeah like you know because they say like three dry like it's a dry swallow or three seconds you know what i mean for it for a, for a joke for a punchline mm. and that's not always true but uh <laughs> that's like the, that's a, that's a good I, when I'm when I'm editing my podcast and I'm moving dialogue around I'll sit there and count to three just to get the timing of the jokes right but uh okay but yeah I mean like I think you like it couldn't have been done during the beginning of COVID and when it opened back up you know we were all very safe about it as we could be and we you know we can I said like listen they say we can have six people or less in the house in, in, a, in a small environment so I said like you know me and four friends, that's it in my basement. We wear masks when we're, when we're around the table, we don't have to wear masks, we have microphones, but when you're up okay. walking around, wear your masks or we go outside and we stand apart. We did, we did, we did our, we did the best we could. And yeah. uh, you're, you're like being conscious of it. And trying we have, to, you know, you, you know, like lay like house rules down. Yeah. And if there was, a, if anyone had any symptoms of any kind, it wasn't just fever. If you have a cough, don't let's just call it for the weekend. Cause we weren't like, we have to record. Let's just get a bunch of episodes together. And then when it's done, we'll put it out. Mm -hmm. So, and then things started lifting up in, uh, you know, early 20, like late 2020. And then it all kind of fell apart. The podcast. Cause I had, a, I had a second kid, not me personally, my wife, but, uh, you were um, involved. <laughs> I was, I was involved, but uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, I was not going cause like, I felt like 2020 and I'm not going to go off and be like one of those weird people who said it's a good thing because mm -hmm. it was not a good thing, but uh, I like, think you could take a lot of good own, came out of it. Yeah. Your own for, credit for, for it. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of good stuff came out of 2020 that I think a lot of us looking back podcasts got started, passions got found mm -hmm. like, that's stuff that might have never happened. Like we yeah. saw like an entire increase in podcasting and would I have started a podcast? Probably not without the pandemic. <laughs> you need, you need a reason to do something. Yeah. And for me, I Twitch streamed for, I, I, I Twitch streamed the mass effect trilogy in, in its entirety, which is about 120 hours of gameplay. Mm -hmm. If you do everything over all three games and that ended around May. So all of April I did, that game and then then it ended so four hours a night 30 days seven days a week and, and that's uh, that's what you were saying you wanted to do more of well i learned that i i liked talking i like because i've always i've been a musician so i've always been a performer mm -hmm. but i found that i could I, I liked the broadcasting elements of twitch i liked i liked that you were putting on a show and mm -hmm. i liked you had to improv you got like you got to keep people interested so you'd learn to talk to yourself you learn to do things that you're you learn from like improv 101 or comedy 101 you learn you have to have an internal dialogue just to 
you have to bounce stuff off yourself and uh, you learn it. And I, I think like, if it wasn't for those first two months, I wouldn't have done anything like I'm doing now. I would have kept trying to be a musician. And I was up until about a few, I still am obviously, but <laughs> I was a performing musician. With all your instruments behind you. <laughs> yeah, like I was a performing musician mm -hmm. up until like two months ago. And then like the band, like, I love this band, yeah, but uh, they, they were like, we don't really, because I was a harsh vocalist for the band. I do a lot of harsh vocals. Mm -hmm. screaming and whatnot is and it they metal? were like metal so band? i was in i was in two bands i've been in a lot of bands but i was in two like <laughs> no in, at least relatively noteworthy for me like i would say i was in a band called persona gray that was in 2017 up until like 2019 we were like synth wave and metalcore mm -hmm. and uh we were like a, just a fun mixture and that band's that band kind of fell apart because it was impossible to play that stuff live. We oh, to I like the live. name persona gray. It's cool. Yeah. The, our guitarist was like, how about persona gray? And we're like, I all, we all, we were all like, we're into it. Yeah. And then <laughs> I joined a band called bottom shelf and that's the band we're I'm talking about is uh, it was, it's a six piece <laughs> band and they just wanted me to scream. And I sit, I, I sat, I was in the car with the guitarist, one of my best friends. And I was like, cause there was a singer, her name is Lexi. And she's phenomenal at singing. And I was like, I'm just going to be in this band until you guys don't need me anymore because you don't need me. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, about like you know, <laughs> eight months into, into, into uh, maybe six months into doing it, I joined the band in October and around June, July, they called, I got a call and they were like, yeah, I think like we like, because I was doing synths for them too. I would write synthesizers for their music, but like, they're like, That's you cool. know, they're like, we don't we we don't really want a screamer like we like we want Lexi to scream and I was like I mean she can and I was like you should like like there's no reason to hold on to it like I I, I did like they made it in the conversation they were like trying real hard to make it like it's not personal I'm like I I never took it that way like it's yeah. just like you guys you have it. a vision and you you're like coming yeah I'm like you like I needed you guys to get the confidence I was on a couple songs and that was good enough for me I mean like I'm happy that they're continuing on like i'm happy they 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 kind of found direction because like you want to see your friends succeed mm -hmm. and uh and i knew like i remember it was right after i got that call i sat down and i i looked at my discord and i said i, I have i have a group chat with all these ideas for omega star seven with the people i i had been having a conversation with the other two actors about when to start and i sat down looked at my discord because i was sitting right here right here having this conversation i look over and i just say all right let's next weekend and then that was it i just i said i'm done with the music because i'm done performing music i mean at least in a now. band setting like yeah. i'm okay like if we were to do like the music of omega star seven live or like someone need me to fill in i'd love to do that kind of stuff but like being in a band's a nightmare <laughs> for someone listening who wants to be in a band don't do it just don't Really? Like it's it, if if you're hanging out with your friends and jamming and you're like let's go play let's go play a show let's go play that that's fine but like when you sit down and try to make a band you will lose all of your friends <laughs> like you're you will have three best friends in a band <laughs> and by the end of it they will never want to talk to each other again like because it's, it's too much like work it's pressure and like you it, it's so it's so it's so hard to deal with that kind of stuff like and. uh it's hard. I mean, it's like, but it's, it's like podcasting too, but I find podcasting rewarding because I don't have to leave my house to do it. Yeah. And you can kind of uh, set your you, own schedule and yeah. I mean, like you, you asked me in our, in our, in our test run, we'll call it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you asked me like, how do I balance everything? And I said, I don't, it's a lot easier to balance or like, you know, have pretend a bit to balance. Sorry, is that an I, ice cream truck? That is my neighborhood ice cream truck. They blast oh my God. this song. <laughs> it's really good ice cream. Like I can see why they advertise oh my God. so hard. <laughs> I, I, love, I, love, I was like, I hear ice cream. I, I just brought it back to nostalgia. But yeah, no, like being in a band and having yeah, a family. Long Beach. <laughs> like, like having a band mm -hmm. and having a family and not being an established band, you almost have to look at it like it's a hobby. Cause if you don't, you're being a bad parent. I mean, like, honestly, you have to like, prioritize. It costs so much money to be in a band. Like, like I can just name off the top of my head. If you want to get a merch run done, it's like $500 for a hundred shirts mm. of decent quality. And like, 
recording persona gray's album ran us like three to five grand that was five songs for three to five thousand mm-hmm. dollars and like i had you know this is right before i had kids so <laughs> i lucked out but like if they asked me if i had my like son i had my son very shortly after i was like guys like no way like, i'm not giving you nine hundred dollars when i just had a baby you know what i mean like, <laughs> but yeah. podcasting it's the only thing you're investing in is your time Mm-hmm. you know because like and you could get better gear and i do have better gear than i did when i started but like you do have to get the equipment yeah i mean like the equipment's the hardest part but like i hear i hear people asking all the time in the audio drama forums how do i start how do i start and i'm like you just start yeah <laughs> yeah you just start like and i was freaking out starting it was the first... <laughs> is by far the hardest part yeah and exactly so like the first i the, the weeks, the days leading up to the first episode recording of Omega Star 7, the new season, mm-hmm. I went through eight different ways that how we can record it. How about we do like an Eric Andre <laughs> in space talk show? And they're like, <laughs> and then we went to like, what if we did it like this or like that? And, and one of my friends was like, dude, and this is ADHD talking. Me just like, what if we do it this way, that way, this way? Mm-hmm. And my friend was like, dude. I think it was Joe. He's like, how about we just stick to the first idea and see how it goes? And I was like, and I, and I was like, you're right. And then I still had those thoughts, but then the first day recorded and it all fell into place and podcast, you know, that's, that's for everybody. Like, how do I do it? Just do it. Just, I mean, a friend of mine at work was like, you know, someone once said, you always throw away the first chapter of your book because you, you learn that all the stuff you feel like you need to say doesn't need to be said. And it's the same with podcasting. If you just do an episode, and if it comes out good, use it. If it doesn't, at least you did it. You know what I mean? And then you learned how to do it. Yeah. Like I feel like it's always good to have a test run. And like, I think with my podcast, I'm proud of everything. I think it's all been yeah the best it could be along the way. I mean, way. it's a good concept too. Like but definitely talking about a, therapy. Thank you. It's definitely improved over time. Just like audio quality wise, like my own, my own like production schedule has improved. Um, except for today with our recording mishap, it's usually pretty smooth. (laughs) No, that's, that's again, like I was, I'm, I'm glad I get to be the one that you (laughs) learn a little bit about and you you learn a little bit (laughs) going about it, but that's the thing. It's like, you start, you have to get out of your own head and start the project you want to start. Yeah, no. And, uh, yeah, it's, it, that's, you said it perfectly. I there's, you just have to do it. Like there's. You, you, you like you psych yourself out you never do stuff like that's I've lived my entire life like that like everyone's mm-hmm. like and yeah like it's it's the same with music like we we have Persona Grey has five we have five so eight songs out plus a cover of uh, Trippy Red which is fun um, but we have five other songs three other songs from a five song EP they're just sitting there and now it's been t- it's too long we're like I'm not we're not putting those out and uh, <laughs> but we just psych we ourselves could. out about the about the well, we still might but uh <laughs> we psyched ourselves out about the production of it. We're like, it doesn't sound perfect. I'm like, who gives a shit? I'm like, you could like, they're like, everyone gets stuck on this one. Like, they're like, I have this big idea. And I'm like. So I, I wonder how you manage this with ADHD. Cause my boyfriend has ADHD. He's very creative, but it seems like for all of the ideas he talks about, only a few of them transpire. So like, how do you tell yourself this is the idea I'm going to make a tangible Ooh. thing? I'm trying to think back. So like there was definitely a time when I would overthink everything and it wouldn't go out. Mm-hmm. So like, oh, I want to do this. And if I just get this, if I just get this and this and this, it'll be perfect. And then I wouldn't do it. I'm just trying to, th- there, was, there was a time, <laughs> I can't remember when it was. Well, even with your example of the eight different ways to record Omega yeah, Star like, 7, it's like, you could get hung up on like which of the eight different ways is the right way to do it until your friend I, was like, let's just do one. <laughs> I think that's the answer. You need someone else that you trust to tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. I think you need someone to be like, dude, like you need someone who's honest. Like if, if I build something and my friend's like, that looks horrible. Okay. I'll believe you. Not, not saying be mean to your friends. I'm <laughs> saying be honest with your friends. Um, you know, not be nicely honest with your friends, but, um, but if I, if I do something and someone's like, that's a good idea, you just kind of have to trust them. Mm-hmm. You kind of have to get out of your own head. And, uh, and you should take, time... that, take that uh, suggestion, that compliment when you can, because it doesn't yeah. come very frequently. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, 
it's so, like dealing with ADHD is very hard. And I feel like, I'm not sure if it was like a growing up thing or it was like some kind of miraculous moment where things just kind of locked into place about how, cause I, ever since this, like this proverbial moment that I'm talking about that I cannot recall when it was, I'm kind of <laughs> glad I like that's mysterious like that. But um, I just, maybe it was when I met my wife, I don't know. Um, I just realized that like, it doesn't Probably. matter. Women How, are very uh, influential. She, she has definitely pushed me <laughs> to do things better than anyone else I've been around. Friends, family. There's just like, there's just a moment, like you kind of have to just do it. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just talking in circles, but that's ADHD. Um, yeah, but it's like, what? what's your first step? Go do that first step. Yeah, like, like and like I said, podcasting, you just have to record. Mm -hmm. You might throw it away. You might keep it. You might, but like, I think- Here's what it is. I think Here's also telling, telling a few people you recorded, then they can ask you later, Hey, when does it come out? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think when it comes to specifically podcasting, I'll say the one thing that helped, helped, uh, helped me uh -huh. listening back to yourself. That's the hardest thing that a podcaster has to do because you were like, <laughs> you, it's like, it opens your eyes because it's, it's like a, it's a blueprint of you as a person and Ooh, you I have like to that. like, you're like, you see yourself, you see the mannerisms, you see like, you learn a lot about yourself through podcasting. And I, I saw like a Twitter post, a Twitter question, you know, pod, all these, all these podcasting platforms, like just post random questions as mm -hmm. the, for the <laughs> algorithm. I don't know what that's all about, but I find it funny. Um, <laughs> but uh, there all, one was like, you know, do you listen to yourself back? And everyone's like, no, I hate how I sound. And I'm like, you know, don't, don't you need that self-awareness to like be a better, I think you need self-awareness to be a better person. Oh, I, for like, sure. yeah. I think you need to understand. Cause like, we, we all know these nice people, but are they really nice? My in-laws are great people, but holy shit. <laughs> do they say and do some like, not horrible things, but like stuff that you'd be like, what the hell? Like, yeah. The it's because they're just totally not as self-aware as us. <laughs> yeah. I, I think like you, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, so like, what do I need to fix about myself? Cause like, mm -hmm. I don't know. And everyone's like, you can, people don't change. People don't change. And it's like, and this is ADHD is like, you know, I looking at me with ADHD as like a 10 year old versus a 28 year old. Like I am now, you know, it's like, I used to not like eating a certain food, but now I like, I used to hate hard boiled eggs mm -hmm. and now I love them. My favorite food in the world. And uh, <laughs> that's a change right there. I mean, yeah. And you just kind of have to hold on to what you're doing. So like ADHD, like, I don't take medication mm -hmm. and uh, not at all, not at all. And really? uh, I did I for know, a very long time. I didn't know that was possible to, to have ADHD. It is horrible it might, for a It while. might impair on your like productivity, right? Without medication. My productivity was never a problem. It was my creativity. Um, okay. Like I was, uh, well, not, no, I, that's not, it, there were, <laughs> so I was first on Adderall mm -hmm. that one was a that one hurt my productivity Adderall was, like was always like the uh popular thing yeah right? like by the end of it yes Adderall like that was like they were like well this is a new drug Adderall try this and I was just like all the time and some people were like you could focus better but like you just I I had no like oomph to go do stuff and then they were like put me on some like I have manic depression as well right and uh, they put me on I, it's been so long. I can't remember what they were. I know what I ended up. I know what my last <laughs> dosage was, but before, like, I know I was on Adderall for a while and they just kept like taking Concerta and going up and down with it and Zoloft and up and down with it. And if I remember Concerta correctly, is a antidepressant? Concerta is the, uh, the, ant is the focusing medicine. Oh, okay. And, uh, they gave me at, by the end of it, I was 16, 17 years old. I was taking 72 milligrams of Concerta and 200 milligrams of Zoloft. Oh my God. This is just, I mean, I, I have not a lot of personal experience with this, but it seems like a high dosage. It was so high that I remember the therapist. There's a, not the, the psychiatrist being like, like they get, they, they had like the teeth. I was like, this He's like, let's try this. And I was like, what oh, am no. I like? A, like I felt, I felt like a Guinea pig and I was like, and Again, the, like the psychiatrist is gritty and bury it. It's like, is this a good sign? Yeah, like it was. <laughs> I I remember like just that really stuck with me. This was now that was I was on that for a couple of years. I remember it was early, either late middle school, early high school, and I went I went on that and like 
I, I, I 17, I think 17, my senior year, I, uh, I said, I'm done. I'm just, mm-hmm. I stopped taking it. I'm just done. And, uh, I, I, I liken this experience because the next three years of my life, I didn't know who I was. Cause I, I never, cause I was very religious about taking my medication. I thought it'd make me a better person. I thought it'd make me focus better. I thought people would like me more. And, uh, <laughs> Well, also like you're prescribed. So you're like, this is what I'm supposed to do, right? Yeah. It felt like it was, it was a normal and natural thing that people have to go through. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know, like maybe if I had less Zoloft and Concerta, I knew who I, I, if going off, I bet I knew who I was better, but I was on so much. It was like, I was a different person. Yeah. I mean, of course, because it's changing your, your brain. uh, Yeah. Like, and for years I had to like. I had to like find who I was. Like it was, it was a night. It was a night. Like I always say, like end of high school nightmare. till when I met my wife was a constant nightmare. Was this because off like both both ADHD and antidepressants? Yeah, because like I the depression thing is like I'm not sad very often. I mean, I get like I get the mood swings, the anger sometimes, mm-hmm. um, but mostly it's like I have this like laziness. Like I just like, I wouldn't even call it laziness. Like that's what people view it as, but it's more like, like sloth uh, like behavior. Like like it feels like you're catatonic, but like your brain is going a thousand miles an hour. So Mm -hmm. you want to move, but your body's not letting you do stuff. And I still deal with that every day. I get up from, I get up for work every day, 7am. I'm just like, (laughs) I just get my phone out. I just scroll on my phone until I feel like, but I feel like a lot of people deal with that, but like, I would rather have, I'd rather deal with that every day for half an hour than like live like how I had to live. And again, a lot of this happened when I was a kid Mm -hmm. and I think the mental illness is still very, very misunderstood on all fronts. ADHD, autism, everything Mm -hmm. is totally misunderstood, misdiagnosed and like mistreated all the time. And a lot of people die from it because, you know, people find that it's hard to live life with mental illness. Mm Mm-hmm. And, it's uh, not it's not as understood as it should be it's not as like it's not that easy to find the solutions you're looking for it should be easier but in america we don't have time when i was uh i went to see a play with my uh oh yeah we, we have we have a playhouse in lancaster and it's the fulton opera house and we went and saw uh beauty and the beast right and uh <laughs> i was having the, 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 the play was over and uh everyone stood up and I remember feeling super overwhelmed and it, it doesn't, everything felt very loud at that very moment. And I just kind of had a panic attack and uh, <laughs> my wife understood this and she kind of gave me my space. Cause I just have to like, let's just leave, get in the car, take a deep breath. It'll be over. My mother-in-law and this, and again, I, I don't want to, I don't want to like make my, my in-laws feel bad. They're good people, but uh, mm, they sure don't understand mental good. illness and going back to like, not like misunderstanding she comes up to me puts her hands on my face and just says just relax and i'm like what do you think i'm trying to do right now (laughs) and like (laughs) i think the people who are in control of the world right now are people like that Mm -hmm. and they just they mental illness has always been a thing and it's some people like you know people who are in control just think just get over it we did i'm like no you didn't look at like look at your like look at your kids like i look i look at my parents and like their kids like because you know i don't count as my parents kids like i am technically their kid but uh i was raised by my grandparents so really my mother and my father are like my siblings Uh because like (laughs) i know it's a weird it's a weird dichotomy to have but like I call them mom and dad, but like the conversations we have are not the kind of conversations you have with your parents. And, uh, are they younger or just cause they didn't, my, my, my parents who are, have been divorced since I was a year old are in their mid forties and I'm almost, I'm almost 30. Mm -hmm. So I was raised by my grandparents who have always treated like my, like my parents. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's just, I think I look at how they, parent their kids now and like my dad does a better job than my mom but but if i had if i had if i had if i had to pick who's doing a better job everyone has their strengths (laughs) right um but my grandparents were always very progressive people as you know as good as like because they're they're not boomers they were they were the generation before 
uh-huh. you know, when they're seven, they're, they're almost 80 now. They've always been progressive people. And uh, so they were like, medication, we'll try it. Cause this is when medication for this mental illness was big. So they, 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 they did everything they could to give me like the best head start that I could get. But like, that's cause yeah. they wanted me to be normal. And I don't, I don't, I don't fault my grandparents for this issue. I, I fault like society as a whole that mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I feel like the world's a lot more of a colorful place <laughs> when people are treated the way they need to be treated. There's, there are, me- oh, there yeah. are men- mental illnesses out there that need medication, obviously, like, you know, and there's some, and even ADHD, some people need medication, but some people just need a better way to do things. You know, I was horrible in school, but I was smart. And then I burnt out because I wasn't challenged enough in the right ways. And I think like it, it takes the same amount of effort and execution to like get kids with ADHD or, you know, autism and, you know, get them to learn. There's better ways to like teach them. And we mm-hmm. don't do it until now. Like my kid, Jet, he is uh, <laughs> four years old and he is uh, in school. He's in preschool. And we were talking. I was like, I, we think we think he may have ADHD and talking to the teacher or your wife yeah the the, the teacher and uh she was like the teacher was like you know we she i I wish i remember what she said but she was she was like i was like he can be hyperactive sometimes no she said i was like he can act a little crazy i don't want to use this word crazy she's like we used to say i like we like to say hyper wild she's like we like to say hyperactive Mm -hmm. because we get it like i don't know i think at 28 i learned more through my own methods than i ever did as a kid because sitting in a classroom, looking at a book, I can't focus. Like I don't read books. I listen to audio. I listen to audio books because I can't sit there and read, but I can yeah. listen. So I think, you know, like how long until kids with ADHD just get an audio book on their phones? Cause all kids have phones now mm-hmm. and the teachers give them an audio book of their lesson. Yeah. I think it's, it's something that demands a lot of individual attention, which unfortunately yeah. we can't really do with like the current school system. I just have such a, like, I know like my That's wife, she revolutionized. Yeah. I mean, my, my wife wants to do like a, uh, like a half homeschool, half real school thing. Cause there's stuff from there's stuff you need. I believe a lot of kids need that, that like what you learn in school isn't what you learn. It's what you learn with other people. Like, you know, mm-hmm. dealing with other people is what you learn in school. And that's, you can't teach that at home. I don't care what anyone says. It's such a hard thing to deal with unless you have like five kids and they have to deal with each other. But <laughs> I, I learned a lot about social interaction in school that I never could have learned at home. Yeah, I think for me, school was much more about like, this is how the social world works. Yes, and, and there's no way to change it. Like, you know, like we can't like, well, oh, that's not true. I think <laughs> there, there's like a primordial level of like social interaction that's never going to change. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying like your standard stuff that we all like, rally against today i'm talking about like oh this person looks like that and you have to learn yeah like how to be embarrassed yeah to learn like how embarrassed to and bullying. like like and I, I think that's important and like i i think we handle bullying improperly i'm not saying it should be allowed i'm just saying like i think like from what this is for when i was a kid so i don't know how it's being handled anymore so i don't want to speak you'll probably that. like learn through your kids i you will know? i will learn soon enough i'm sure because like yeah. he's he's been to school twice now two days because he was sick in the middle one mm-hmm. and uh he hasn't had any problems yet so i guess we're gonna find out but um again he's in preschool though you know all they want to do is play there's no social clicks in preschool i don't know I, least, I remember being i think i was kind of a bully in preschool i feel like uh, it, it starts young <laughs> It does start young. I mean, like, there's definitely like, oh, this kid's like taking crayons and stuff, but like, <laughs> pushing I, me into my cubby. There, there, there is some. Uh, I, I can't, I can't recall them perfectly, so I'm not gonna tell any stories. But like, I remember like some <laughs> really bad bullying moments. I don't want to like miss. I don't want to like make it sound worse than it was. But mm-hmm. when I was growing up, and I was like, man, what's wrong with these kids? Like, I remember <laughs> when I was a kid, I was like, but then like, I don't know. It's hard to say like, who's a bully. Now we're gonna get into like a real philosophical part here. <laughs> like, what is being a bully? Is it being loud? Is it be? Is it hurting people? Like, yeah, I, don't, I think I, don't I was. Know. I think I was a meaner child, and then I got bullied, and then I had a a turnaround moment. But were you meaner, or were you just like more outspoken, and no one knew how to direct that? I was probably more aggressive. When I was really <laughs> my my young. son's super aggressive, and like, but he's such <laughs> a nice kid. Like, he's nice to other kids, but he will get up in someone's face and i'm like whoa dude like what you're doing seems mean like i know you're not trying to be mean but you're being mean yeah 
I don't know. It's sometimes kids are you're, so, like, I was bossy. Sometimes I wanted to be the, yes, the leader. <laughs> well, dude, like I always wanted to be the leader too. Like, I think that goes back to like why I do what I do. Um, mm-hmm. I always wanted to be taken seriously, even if it's funny, like, Oh, he's funny, but like, he's taken seriously about his funniness. Like I want, like, I'm like prestige or something. Like I wanted to feel higher on the social ladder mm-hmm. and that we was kind of big this joke yeah like well I, I felt like that was a big motivator for me i'm not sure about how f- for you but like i know i i, I want to be a musician because people would like me more you know yeah. what i mean and like oh this guy's cool he's a musician and like i learned that none of that shit means anything like <laughs> because like when you turn 24 25 and you're still playing in a band and that band's not that band's not doing anything and Anything could be, you know, at least you're playing shows every couple of weeks or you're, you know, you're doing something. But I mean, like you play in a band with your friends and you think you've made it like those kind of people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like no one like you're, you're right back to not being taken seriously anymore. Like it's mm-hmm. I don't know. I felt I found like until I, I, I always wanted to be validated, but I couldn't be validated to like validate myself. And that's a pretty recent discovery of myself was being yeah. able to validate myself. You're also young. You're 28. I'm 30. 28. So you're like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so much younger. <laughs> you're eons ahead of like, at least like the family, uh, raising kids thing. So I think you're pretty mature for where you're at in life. Having kids definitely helped. I think, I mean, I know that's like a, that's a big cliche is like, Oh, when you have kids, it'll all, it'll all <laughs> fall into place. But like, I mean, I'm still like, I mean, you, you never learn how messy your parents are until you're a parent. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> I think I'm doing a better job than my parents, obviously. (laughs) Um, That's good. You want to improve. It's a a one-up up show. I think I'm doing a better job. (laughs) Um, To answer your (laughs) to answer your question, I think I do comedy and podcasting because I, you know, didn't get as enough enough attention as a kid, and now I'm like, this is my time. So yeah, it's nice being on that the the (laughs) microphone, the lights on you. I get that. Like I get whenever I do an open mic night, I get like these. I still get like the, uh, like the pit in the stomach. Like there was one mm-hmm. recently where I, ha- I just told the host, I was like, take me off tonight. I'm having like a panic attack. Cause I was like, I didn't have any material prepared. Yeah. You don't uh, want to go broadcast your panic attack. That I do. I, I, I walked away and I, I drove home. Oh dude, that's a, f- you want to, you want to know how ADHD works? <laughs> I can tell you right now that, that day on that, this isn't really a funny story. It's actually kind of sad, but like, there's a guy. <laughs> well, a very I don't want to depress con- you. I keep, I keep bumping I, you out. <laughs> I, I find it funny. Everyone else finds it depressing, but uh, okay, we'll make there's, it a, there's a comedian <laughs> named uh, Ron Kane and he's a really funny, really nice guy. I've really had too many conversations with him, but what I, what I have, he seems very nice. And he was doing a stand up bit. Like I was supposed to go. I told Audrey to take me off before I didn't do it right. As the, my time was up, I said, Hey, just take me off tonight. And mm-hmm. then he's up. And I'm like having this panic attack. So it's all outdoors. This is a, uh, this is in 2020, late, late 2020, and uh, it's all outdoors. So mm. it was, it was kind of had a brick wall and everything was kind of cool. It reminds you of the Seinfeld. But um, <laughs> I had gotten my car, and it was during Ron Kane's stand-up spot, and I was listening to him, but I had my windows down, and I was waiting. I didn't turn my car on. It was hot. I just sat there until I heard people start clapping like it was over. Then I turned the car on and drove away <laughs> because I thought if I no, not pol- like you think it looks polite, but <laughs> I did that because I was scared that he was going to make a joke about me leaving during his set. Oh, I, that is kind of a rude thing to do. I know at the open mics here, you're supposed to stay for the full hour. I know. Well, ours is like the one we go to is in Millersville. Uh, check out if you're ever in Pennsylvania, Millersville Phantom Power, Monday okay. night comedy nights. But I will go um, next time I'm in the state. <laughs> Um, ours is like from seven to nine and we're supposed to get there at six and mm. oh, it's like, yeah, a few hours. It's, commitment. it's a few, it's a, it's a few hour commitment and the, the, it's not slow. Like there's no, there's no good time to leave because everyone's spot is five minutes. And then mm. the turnover is about 30 seconds. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's a, and there's, there's no breaks or intermissions. Like it's, we know who's up next. The host comes up and says, how, yeah, who up and up next. That was really funny. Ha ha ha. This is what's happening next. And then that person comes up and then that's it. Then we're just on to the next person and it goes by very quickly. And, uh, I don't like leaving though, but like as a parent with two kids and where I would be up at work at seven and I would have a podcast, you know, it's it's you it's have some other obligations but I, I was having like a panic attack and like adhd works in a way that's like 
I was like, I was like, you know, if you leave right now, he's going to make fun of you. So just wait, just listen to the set and wait. So it's, mm-hmm. it's cause like, if I, if I, if I sat at the <laughs> That's seat, why you stayed. <laughs> so you're, you're going to be uh, now I'm, I'm like reliving this moment. I, I, I was sitting in my seat by myself. I had other friend comedians around me, but I had my own little table mm-hmm. and I was like sitting there. I'm like, if I leave right now, it's going to look weird. So I'll wait to the next guy. And then when he's walking up, I'll leave. And then, so I'm hyper fixating on this. Like someone could have been talking to me and I wouldn't even notice. So I'm hyper fixating. And I just, so person sets ends. I stand up while Ron Kane's walking up and I walk to my car. I beeline to my car. I know someone was like, see ya. And I was like, bye. See ya. <laughs> and uh, I just got in my car, sat there. He starts talking. I'm like, shit, I got to wait now. Five minutes. It's like 98 degrees and I have my windows down listening. And then he's like, all right, guys, that's my time. Thanks. I turn my car and just leave as fast as I can. Yeah. So that and, that's only because it is an outdoor mic too. Yeah. And oh my God, if it was indoor, it would have been like so easy to just be like, all right, guys, I'm out of here. But like mm-hmm. my ADHD, like I just couldn't get out of my own head. And mm-hmm. I think that's like the hardest part about ADHD is getting out of your own head. But once you can learn to do that, I think ADHD is like one of the most I think having ADHD, if I could change it, I wouldn't. It's the one mental illness I think that like, for me personally, this isn't, this isn't for everybody. I couldn't live without it. Mm-hmm. I need it. Like I, I need that ability to hyper fixate. And I need, I love the fact that I have so many different passions that keep me always busy. And I like that my life is such a mess sometimes. Like I, I like, I feel that comfort in the chaos. You know what I mean? Like I just, I like that everything's falling. I like the pressure of like needing to do something because it, it makes me feel young, even yeah. at 28. Like it makes me feel like I'm a kid. You are times. young. <laughs> but even younger is what I'm saying. Like, I feel like, I feel like I'm in high school or like I need to, like, okay. I have a paper due and I need to like, but like, it just feels like I I, I feel like I have direction you when have everything's a, falling apart. Like, you have uh, an adrenaline coming through. Yeah. It, it's like, like, you know, the idle hands do the devil's work, like that whole thing. Like if I just sit there and do nothing, I feel like I just... I waste my life away. Like I'll just, I'll watch TV mm-hmm. and it's not even good TV. It's not something that's saying anything. It's just TV. And <laughs> I respect people who can do that, but like, I, like, I can't even enjoy it though. Like I, I, I respect people and, and envy people who can enjoy mindless TV because I can't, my mom's sitting there watching 90 day fiance and I'm over at her house and I'm like, what is this? And I'm like, she's like, it's not a fiance that Ed, big Ed's on. And I'm like, what is going on? And like, we're sitting there and I feel like this weird, everything's melting. It almost felt like, like, <laughs> like they're in, they're all sitting in the couch and like her Christmas tree still up for some reason. And <laughs> we're just watching 90 Day Fiance. I have like a wine. I have like wine and Sprite because I always, I always put some kind of soda in an alcohol for some reason. I don't know why. And uh-huh. I'm sitting there and <laughs> it's like, I didn't know if it was 30 seconds or 20 minutes, but I just stood up and said, I'm leaving. And yeah. And did, I, I, I go to my grandparent. She ahead. had you no. over to like hang out though. It wasn't to watch 90 Fiance. No, no. I, yeah. She, <laughs> she, my mom's a hairdresser. She cuts my hair. So, uh, oh, okay. but like I was hanging out cause she's my mom <laughs> and I love her, but like, I was mm-hmm. like, Is this all you do. And she's like, yeah, I just watch TV. I'm like, I want, I want to kill myself being here. And I know you shouldn't make jokes about that, but I really meant it in that moment. I, I was like, I hear what you're saying. I, like, I you got never into... make those kind of jokes, but I mean it. I was like, I could never live like this. <laughs> You know what, Skylar? I think it's warranted for 90 Day Fiance because I got into that show during the pandemic. Yeah, I think everyone did from what I hear. It is obsessive. You really get into the people because they're fucking ridiculous. But then my boyfriend would come in and be like, why are you watching this garbage? It makes me upset. It makes me triggered. I'm like, you're right. <laughs> it is it is terrible. And they they spin it out so it lasts 90 minutes and that's just unnecessary. So I, I, it takes I like... your life away. <laughs> I think reality TV has a lot of like positive outlook, like not, not itself, but like, I think there's a positive learning like thing about, cause you, if you can like step yeah. outside what's going on in the show, you're like, if you can this turn is... it off, if you can stop watching, yeah. Then yeah, it's like, okay. I, I feel like, <laughs> but like, yeah, when, when I watch TV, like I'll watch, like, I always say like, I always like to watch anime, but like, it's very specific anime, but, uh, mm-hmm. Stuff that I grew up with when I was a little kid watching anime at like three in the morning. My grandparents are asleep and I'm watching Adult <laughs> Swim. And uh, like that's what I like to watch. Like that, like those kinds of animes that you'd you'd see at like three in the morning, like just real pulpy, stupid animes or really good ones. But uh, I named two of my kids, I named two both my kids are named <laughs> after anime characters, but um Oh, that's cute. But uh 
Yeah, I just uh, when I watch you're getting, TV, you're getting like something out of watching anime. If you're yeah, watching I mean, reality like, TV, are I mean, you getting a lot out of it. I either watch anime or I watch like old crappy movies, or I'll watch like really good movies. Like, I, like my favorite movie of all time is Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen that one? No. But like, because the first Blade Runner, I've always liked the first Blade Runner, but like it's, when I saw the second one, I was like, I saw it in theaters and I was like, whoa, this is like the best (laughs) movie I've ever seen in my life. Like, it's just, it's like three hours long and like, or it's like two and a half hours long. And some scenes are just like 30 seconds of just establishing shots. It's just a beautiful movie. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, whenever I watch TV, I need to get something. Like, I wish I could, I don't know, I'm trying to say. I wish I could turn off and watch 90 days, 90 day fiance. That's what I wish. I wish I could just sit down and turn on a stupid TV show. Like my wife will just sit there and watch the good doctor right now. Mm-hmm. And she just listen, but she's like, what's well, cause I'm home with the kids a lot. And I feel like I have friends when I listen to doctors talk and I'm like, okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> but, uh, but there's, like, there's different yeah. mindless TV you could get into if you really want to. I don't think it's something you have to do, but. I'm sure I there's know, something well, about musicians or comedy that you could watch absent my absent my Oh, uh, here's the problem though. <laughs> is like here's my problem. Like I all right, so I bought my synths. I bought all of these <laughs> about this is ADHD. It's going back to ADHD. Mm-hmm. It was um it was earlier this year, I think March was my it was the blue one over here. And then it was seven hundred dollars. I'll I'll just say it out loud. I I I didn't pay all up front to say you all. I I I got I I did a payment plan on it because you know I'm a millennial. I don't have any money. Yeah, I'm a fan of payment plans. <laughs> I'm a fan of payment on. plans. <laughs> like, but uh, I, I get I get the I get that, and I'm like, if I just get, I, this is giving me a nice layer of music. But if I get like this, I'll be set. So I get something else, and I get something else, and I just had to say stop. Cause I, I bought that one, that one, there's three below it. There's another <laughs> one somewhere else in my house. That's like a drum machine that I broke like an idiot. Uh-huh. And I just couldn't stop because like, I just wanted to get it to enjoy playing synths, but I had to do it for something. If I, if I get a guitar, I want to join a band. If I get a synth, I want to do synths for podcasts. Like I feel like everything I do has to be connected to something bigger. Mm-hmm. And this is, this, I guess that's kind of like the, the caveat to ADHD because I did say it was really nice to be able to hyper fixate and have like direction, like having no direction while also having direction. Those were all good things about ADHD, but at the same <laughs> time, like you always feel like you're not doing enough. You always feel like you're unaccomplished. So you, I, I rarely feel accomplishment. Like mm-hmm. I feel like a constant imposter syndrome whenever I get like, like, Oh man, you, you, you broke a thousand plays. I'm like, that's not me. I didn't do that. And I'm like, no, you did. Like your podcast <laughs> broke a thousand. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. My name's on it, but I don't know what you're uh, talking I, about. I didn't do that, man. That, that, that was, and it's like, I feel like I can't, I can't just sit back and like relish in anything that I've ever done. Right. Like, you have like to, you have to do that in order to be happy. You have to be able to step back a little bit and be like, look at my accomplishments. Yeah. And, Luckily, these days, like these before, like before I hit you up to, you know, we, we started talking. I was like, I finally started to feel like I'm going to sit back and just enjoy. I think Twitter helped. I know Twitter, people have a problem with Twitter. Mm-hmm. But if you look at my Twitter for Omega Star 7, I just post stupid stuff that pops into my head. And that's ADHD again. I'm at work and I'm like, this would be really funny. And it makes no sense. I'll just post it anyway. Uh-huh. And it, it feels nice to have that place to like just speak out into the world because you can't keep it in your head and I, I have an outer monologue so i'll just talk to myself mm. about like what i have to do and it's nice to be able to like focus it somewhere but then again like i feel like adh is like a water balloon and you just have to pop it once in a while to let go of all that building up and i think with the this podcast good. you're onto a lot of analogies i like this i've <laughs> i have thought I, and you know, I never, I never really thought about it until these past couple of years about ADHD and cause I, I, the manic depression thing, I don't even think about, like, I, I know I have it. I know I have some, like, not like I have some like angry moments where I get like real angry and I hold on to anger a lot easier, mm-hmm. but like, I'm starting to get better at letting it all go. And, uh, kids will teach you that if you're an angry person yeah. talking to someone who doesn't hear you can be a very angering experience, but eventually you begin to just let it go. But ADHD, I've thought heavily about because like, I'm starting to realize that like a lot of my friends will like misdiagnose me, which if you're listening, don't misdiagnose your friends. 
I had a friend try very just hard tell them to go seek. Hold on, I have my son here. <laughs> is he okay? Oh, he's is fine. Everything okay? He's, he's like, I don't, he's like, I don't, he's like, I want to be out there. I'm like, yeah, I'm, co I'm coming in a few minutes. Just, I have kept you too long. I'm sorry. No, no. My, my, I think my wife might have fallen asleep. So, <laughs> but speak him. of the devil, I'm like, here he comes. I'm like, oh, I hear someone coming in. Like, I figured it's gonna be Jet, but uh, he's no, my my kids are great, but uh, <laughs> he wants yeah, to I give mean, you an update. Yes, he's like, well, Stella's Stella's awake because the sun's in her face, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> what about it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I won't keep you too much longer. I I did want to ask just because sure. of the podcast. Uh, are you? You said you weren't in therapy, so. Why did yes. you stop going? Why, why aren't you? I'll tell you, okay. So therapy mm -hmm. is just too expensive. It can be expensive. I, I feel like when I, when, I, when I decided to stop going, it was, uh, I was like 17 and uh, I just was like, I don't know, like I, I kind of blended psychiatrists and therapists together, which is not the case. And you no also, said, you've also been on meds since yeah. being kids. That's a lot too. No one sat me down and said, look, Scott, therapists are different than psychiatrists. They're not the same thing. Like I, psychiatrists will listen to what you have to say, but they're not going to offer you like a listening ear. They're just there to like help mm -hmm. guide you to a good, like prescribed medication to help you. A therapist is there to help and offer advice. No one ever sat me down to say that because my therapist, I had one, I can't remember any of their names, but he was an old, he was like <laughs> maybe 60 years old. And I would, I would, he, he would try to pry me open because I was always like very like, I don't really want to talk. I, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. And uh, I would finally start talking. And whenever I would start talking, he would just nod off. And he's like, all right, that was great. And I was like, oh, and no. I don't know if that was like some kind of like weird. Cause I'm gonna tell you something that sounds like he was being a jerk, but like it got me to open up entirely. <laughs> so I, I don't know if there was like some kind of like reverse mind trickery there because like that was extreme. Cause like, if you give me a wall to talk to, I will talk to a wall yeah. and this guy would just fall asleep and I would say everything that was on my mind and then <laughs> I would walk out feeling better. So I don't know, like maybe, and maybe that's just like, you know, idiot savants where like, you know, you just mm -hmm. fall into a good thing, but, but you know, I don't know. I felt like growing up, I have a, I have a, pr I have a level of pride that I feel like I need to break down sometimes to go talk to a therapist. So like when I was my prideful years of no more medication, trying to refine myself, learning more about myself and kind of trying to go, trying to like relive some stuff that was missed as a kid because I was on medication mm -hmm. and uh, I just didn't want to, I, I was so busy. And by the time I could go to therapy or should go to therapy, I had no money because like in a very quick time, I went from living with my grandparents, which was like a relatively privileged environment to living with my mom in not so relatively privileged environment. And then that fell apart, met my wife. I lived in an apartment the size of my room back here. Then I had a bathroom. That was pretty much my whole part of my apartment. And um, that did, I, I did that for a while, lived with my wife. And then I lived here, I lived in a Columbia, which is like a, a water town outside of Lancaster. And uh, that's it. Dad. Yes, sir. <laughs> FaceTime Stella. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to work this thing, man. I, I lost the network. What I don't know. What you have to, you have to get here, go give this to mom and she can fix it for you. Okay. Cause I don't have the camera right next to me. He wants to turn on her, uh, her webcam and look at her. He like my uh, kids like each other, but yeah, I mean, I should have learned to like use like go to therapy and uh, just kind of bite the bullet because I think it's helpful. But like, I don't know, like, I think my wife's like, my wife is, we're, we're trying to get to like, I think it's good for couples to have couple counseling, even if you're not totally oh, yeah. So I think it I might start it there. Year. I think it was Yeah. Great. Like, I think like, I think even if your, your marriage or relationship is good, like nothing hurts to just go yeah. and just get like a, make sure everything's cool. Like, the key is to go before you need it. Otherwise, like things could get bad later. Yeah. I mean, like, so I think that's the first step. Cause like we have kids right now and COVID's so bad, it's starting to get bad again. So like, I think like once things kind of like lighten up again, I think we'll just start with couples counseling and then kind of just to, I, I think we're, I think we're in a good place, but I think like, again, I want to make sure that I think it's again. So going back to what we were talking about, self-awareness is important. And uh, yeah, I think, I think why I stopped going was because like I dropped 
all of it at once medication therapy and everything and then mm -hmm. i spent so long trying to find myself and by the time it all came back around i felt like i didn't need it anymore and now i'm kind of like regretting not going back just to kind of get like a mental checkup to see where i was mm -hmm. and i felt like i felt like i've done the hard way for a long time about with not going to therapy like i've had to like work out my own issues a lot harder without someone to talk to that was just totally unbiased mm -hmm. so i think in the next few months i'll probably start going back so yeah do you i have, just don't even know where to start do you have insurance benefits you could use i do luckily yeah so look up a therapist in your insurance network and just try yeah it. yeah I, I, that's i'm probably gonna do that for sure and i can't recommend couples counseling enough like i think my boyfriend and i just you know got stuck in quarantine and i think we needed it but yeah. the, the therapist mostly just opened up things i didn't know about him at all and it really did strengthen us as a couple so i recommend it i'm i'm gonna take the recommendation and i think i will do that do it if you if you listen to therapy or lot, we're having a couple's therapist on soon so <laughs> oh i i did i just i did listen to a couple episodes because i mean, I went on another podcast recently with my wife's friend who has a podcast who's a comedian and mm -hmm. I'd never met him before. So I listened to like the first eight episodes of his podcast because I was like, <laughs> to I want to wanna know, know <laughs> who I'm going to be sitting down with. So yeah, it's smart. It's a good way to get to know someone. Yeah. I mean, because in podcast, you just say it all. So mm -hmm. yeah, check it out uh, later this month. We'll have the couple's therapist on and let's spin the wheel if you have time just okay. to answer I'll, a quick question. They're all gone now. So okay. If, they, if he comes back. Landed on if you had to choose a superpower, what would you choose and why? Oh, I get this is such a good question. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, part of me likes the idea of like whatever Mr. Manhattan was on sounds cool as hell, mm. but like, um, <laughs> Dr. Manhattan, but uh, he's like a jet, space... if, jet. If I had a jet, if I had a superpower, what would it be? No, I'm finishing up now. If he's he's a space alien, right? Dr. Yeah, if you had a superpower, what would it be? What's your superpower? Running and jumping. I think my superpower would be water breathing or <laughs> some kind of psycho communication, like being able to like walk through walls or stuff like that. Sounds cool. Oh, I got Ooh. one. Interfacing with technology. That sounds cool. What does that mean? Like, like you know, like with the technology. Yeah, like you know, like being able to like, like a ghost. I don't know, like being able to like. <laughs> I don't know. I had this idea for a superhero that was like, that was like he could like mess with it. He, was, I, I wanted to call him Poltergeist, and he could like go in through the Marvel. Don't steal this idea from me. You're listening. <laughs> I had this idea for a superhero that was like his name was Poltergeist, and he would like mess with the technology. Like he would go into like you know like the old movie poltergeist where the tv would do weird stuff yeah that's what i thought i thought that'd be cool like that could be cool definitely very helpful in the current age so yes but like i think i think dr manhattan's like reality of bending ability would be awesome that'd be that'd be mine that'd be very cool like i, I love that reality. uh hbo version of watchmen too that i was... haven't watched it yet i need oh, it's to great i need to i hear it's a lot more faithful i mean i don't know i think i think zach snyder's version was very faithful to the comic as well i think it but like I liked that they're like because it doesn't take place after the comic books, the the the, H, the, the HBO, HBO version I or the think comic book. I think it's just like an interpretation of the world yeah. during during the comic, but not oh, okay. It's a different story, I think. But I I'm not because I, I hear that like the, the alien squids in it, like the alien squid that like I heard that the alien squid shows up, and that was like a big thing that was that was skipped in Zack Snyder's version. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's different from the movie, so yeah, the I movies the movie's like its own thing, I think. But like, I I, I do have to check it out. What, what what show? What it's on HBO, right? HBO, yeah. Yeah, I have to get my hands on that. Do it. I'm not even a, a big superhero person. I loved it, so. I uh, neither am I though. So <laughs> I, I hear you. It's good. It's good storytelling. Yeah, I'm more of a Star Wars guy, but. There you go, um, Skylar. Thank you so much. Please thank you so us, much for having me. Tell us where to find you and how to listen oh, to your podcast. Oh, okay. You can check out Omega Star Seven on any streaming platform, and if you if, if if it's not on the one you listen to, let me know on Twitter at, at Omega Star Seven underscore Pod because I will get it on that podcast for uh, app for you. So you can check out my band's Persona Gray Bottom Shelf um, from when I was doing music, and you can check out Omega Star Seven on your favorite uh, podcast streaming platform.
All right. We'll, we'll definitely check it out. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I had a lot of fun. Thanks. Me too. Right. Um, by the way, if you want to send me a headshot for promoting the episode, feel free to email me one. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think this will be out in a few weeks, probably in October. So I'll, I'll send you an email oh, good. when, it, when good. it comes out. Awesome. Yeah. Let me know. I'll send okay. you, I'll send you a headshot. Okay. And if there's anything you want me to include in the show notes, just send me an email. All right. Thank you for having me. I just want to say, sorry, I fumbled through the whole no. thing. No, 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 no. I I'm sorry I kept because, you like, so long. <laughs> no, no, no. Because like, I thought like, I don't know, my wife must have fallen asleep and that's, he was, he was like hanging out, but like, I want like, I got all like, fl I was like, whoa, <laughs> please. You're doing this. But, I mean, jet was great. He did not scream into the microphone. So yeah, I, he doesn't do I that. You're doing great. <laughs> he, pretty respectful about that kind of stuff. So I but, did this um, one podcasting class with a dad and his kids were just like screaming in the zoom the, yeah. whole, the whole time. <laughs> oh my God. That'd be horrible. I mean, what I, what I, what I do, we play D and D online. Sometimes my friends come over and we like do like the whole like zoom and what, Jet will come in like, what are you guys doing? And I have to be like, <laughs> okay. And then I just kind of like take him out. But like, I, I, I try to explain to my kids, like they're adults. Like, I'm like, listen, like I'm talking to somebody and they, mm -hmm. it's not like you're in person where like, you can just raise your hand or like tug on us. Let us know you want to talk. Like, you know, I can't, I can't just break away. So mm -hmm. I try to be respectful to my kids about that. Cause I know, like, I wish someone did that when I was a kid, just explained better. Yeah. No, I think you're doing a great job. And thank you so much for taking the time. I think, thank you so much for having me. I, I think really it came appreciate out great. it. Of All course. Right, good. I'm glad. Yeah. I'll be checking out the Omega Star 7. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to listen to more of your podcast. I, I, I wasn't kidding. I love the concept of like, just like bitching about therapy. And like, I think thank it's you. I think it's an important, because like, I think like mental illness, like when I listen to other mental illness podcasts, it's always like, oh, you know, everything Sometimes is it's like, a little heavy it's either heavy or it's too light where it's like, you know, it, it almost feels like that fake Reiki. I'm not saying Reiki's fake. I'm saying like, it feels like, like Tony someone Robbins. just, someone learned about Reiki and is now doing it because they, they watched an ASMR video on it. And it, just feels like, <laughs> yeah. it feels very fake. And like, so I feel like, I feel like it's all, it's life is comedy. So like, mm. I think it's good to talk about it in a comedic tone because it's what it is. Like, I think so too. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you for thank you so much for having uh, spreading me. the good word. Oh, Have a absolutely. great rest of your day. Hey, you too. All right. Take care. Enjoy your Sunday. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye.